My earliest memory is riding in my grandfather's boat, arm over the side, hand in the spray. I've spent much of the rest of my life chasing this feeling. All of that has led to this. The Wooden Boat Experience. This week's video is a bit different. Although lots of work got done, as you'll see, not enough on the boat. It got me thinking about all the things that have happened here at River Road Farm in the 10 years that we've owned it. First, let's look at this week, and then let's look at the last 10 years. The wind is blowing so hard, the insulation just stays on the wall. Friday, I put up the outside. You can see the blue side of the building was added on. Of course, if you fly around the other side with a drone like I did, it sort of looks like a movie set, not a completed building. But that's uh, one of the things on my checklist. Right after Thanksgiving, I'm on that, and we will have that closed in. I gotta move that skiff. I had to use the backhoe and get the electric line from the shed where the 200 amp service is over to the skiff house before the ground gets wet. Now there's already power going into the studio, but not enough. I wanted a separate circuit for the skiff house. If the ground gets wet here with our clay, you really don't want to deal with that. It's a real nightmare. I had no choice but to uh, do it on Saturday. Another thing that really had to get done this week was digging the ditch. Um, we've had some problems with flooding the last couple years in the winter time because the water kind of sits there there's too many cattails it sort of is like fiberglass the cattails get in with the ice and it doesn't move so i had to dig an open spot and it rained a lot last night and the dish worked perfectly no build up or anything so i'm happy with that and that got done you know this is the time of year where a whole bunch of stuff has to get done hey here is scott now in his new wbet Today marks the beginning of the Wooden Boat Experience Tool Campaign on Bonfire. Four different shirts to choose from. Link in the description below. More details later in this video. I've got a few new boats I need to add to our wall. Dave J, Carter S, Michael B, and Howard and Cheryl. You guys know who you are. Also, Adam Connolly sent me some pictures of his lake craft, which were interesting, and Gary Green, Happy Thanksgiving to you. Love seeing the picture of your lineman. Well, the problem certainly wasn't Total Boat. They surely came through with the stuff that I needed from them. As you can see, when I opened it up, I got the primer. I've got a little bit more fairing because I'm nervous about almost running out of that. And the proper rollers. Um, but between me being so busy, it was Thanksgiving week, so I had some other stuff I had to do. And the weather just really didn't cooperate. Um, it just didn't allow for priming part two. But hopefully next week, that's what we'll have. Priming part two. I almost forgot. My friend Steve Shea told me this is called boxing the paint. And now let's take a look at the last 10 years at River Road Farm. For several years, we looked for land with a river view. In January of 2010, we finally purchased two acres of land overlooking the St. Lawrence River with plans to create a place to escape to each summer. We had no idea what it would become just 10 years later. The first thing I did was cut some trees down that were blocking my view. In March, I came back with some help to begin shaping the lot to my liking. This building was too far gone to save. These are the first of many ships I would see over the years from our great view. We returned during our spring break in April. We had dug some oak trees from where we lived four hours away to plant here. Now to build a bridge to reach the area where the cabin would be. The cabin was built as a cabin, on 6 by 6s setting on bedrock, up high to improve the view. Who knew we would someday make it a home? By the end of summer 2010, the cabin had a roof, but not much else. In April and May, I worked on the interior using a generator. We had great gardens that summer. By July, we had hot water and electricity, even a fridge, although it was on the outside, and a camper for guests and I laid out where my studio would be built. We had been running everything by generator, the well pump, even the hot tub. We were in the lap of luxury. The Amish plowed the area that was going to be a pasture and gardens. I would come north most weekends, but once school was over, I would move to the cabin. Our chickens moved with me. You can see here that I had begun the original studio building. That screened-in porch was heaven. 
I really miss it. Mary was pretty good on the grill. She made things I didn't think were possible. You can see our outdoor fridge right next to the outdoor shower. It is a great place to be all summer. By November, I had the studio together, on the outside at least. In May, things looked pretty good, especially since I knew that in June, I was not going to be at my job in the southern tier any longer, and I would be coming to the Thousand Islands permanently. The Amish came to build what would become my gallery, but is now becoming the Skiff House. The studio looked good on the outside, but wasn't finished inside, and it wasn't big enough. We relaxed some in the summer, but by September I was adding on to the studio. My friend Marty Sny came to help, and then my son Hovey. In December, I installed this wood stove. I was working in the studio each day, but living eight miles down the road at my mom's. We still had our house four hours away that was for sale at the time. Lots of snow that winter. In April, Mary was here for spring break. She came here for good in June. We raised a pig that year, and the goats finally arrived. Everything seems great in the fall. But the longer you live here, the earlier you try to get ready for winter. The screened porch went away as I added to the cabin. That first winter in the cabin was something. So many frozen water lines. We had moved the bridge over because we were hoping to add the kitchen. You think Mary was good with the grill. You should have seen her with the toaster oven the first winter. In April, the bees came out, then goat babies. We grew a lot of cut flowers that year, even had a visible hive in the gallery. Summer was great, but it was time to get serious on the kitchen. This is how I drew it first, late August, early September. Stone was going into the foundation. In October, the framing began. I'm still not sure how I did some of this alone. In early November, it looked like this. I created a greenhouse on the end of the kitchen, which allowed me to comfortably work and do masonry all winter with little heat. Our Subaru was a great rock vehicle. In February, it looked like this. Of course, here it is now. In June, it was shaping up and Patsy, the dog, and Cinnamon, the goat, were a lot of help. Cinnamon was a bottle baby. She could fit through the fence, so when you called her, she would run to the house to be fed, coming across the bridge. Patsy would herd her back afterwards. In October, the wall was nearing the top. Here are two panoramic views, 2015 at the top, 2016 at the bottom. If the kitchen wasn't enough, we were building a barn as well. I did have some help, as Kenny and Brittany came to stay here and help grow Glass Goat as a company. I think there must be a bunch of photos somewhere of 2017, but I can't find them. I do see we started the entrance and we did get the inventory shed in place. The barn seems to be done and I see the tractor shed has been added on to the barn. I think I'll let 2018 speak for itself. Ball goes back. Two thousand nineteen began with Glasgow producing videos for YouTube, but not yet the wooden boat experience. Even in July the boat shed wasn't started. If you're interested in the rest of the story, watch season one of the wooden boat experience and now season two. 
you'll see all you could want of Scott and more. Hey, look there at the top right, a new sticker. A little bit deeper explanation on the Bonfire t-shirt campaign. It's, it says it's a tool campaign and it's about replacing some tools. This orbital sander vibrates too much and it's tons of dust. The high-end one that I could use with my vacuum cleaner I already have, the fine vacuum cleaner, would alleviate both those problems. I want to get a better one of these. Not that I'd stop using this, but this is great for flat, not so good on the curves. I want a longer one that's flexible in the middle, not attached to the handle like this. And a longer one gives you a better fairing when you're fairing. And also a wireless mic system so I can gather some better audio from guests or when I go to visit people and I'm not close to them. I'm always close to my camera, almost always. It's the other person that isn't, and that's why I need the wireless mic system to help their audio, not my audio as much. So hopefully you'll check us out on Bonfire, Glass Goat. It's the Wooden Boat Experience Tool Campaign. It only lasts for nine days, and after that, you can't get these same shirts anymore. They won't exist. It's only a one-time printing. Now how this works is, it goes for nine days. At the end of nine days, they print them all, ship them all at the same time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.